this video, we're going to be checking out an RC circuit to where we find the current immediately after the switch is closed, the current after a long time has passed, and the voltage across both of the capacitors. So initially, we have a current flowing out. And as it reaches this junction over here, it could either go through the 5 ohm resistor or straight through the first capacitor. And since the capacitor initially acts as a short, the electrons are going to take the path of least resistance and skip that 5 ohm resistor. And secondly, when it reaches this next junction, it could either go through the 2 ohm resistor or pass through this capacitor over here. And this one also acts as a short temporarily. And then the charge just flows around the perimeter of the circuit and only passes through the 1 ohm resistor. Now, with that being said, that means we can use Ohm's law and have a total voltage of 12 divided by the total resistance of 1 ohm, which gives us 12 amps of current for our first answer. So immediately after the switch is closed, we have two, uh, 12 amps running temporarily. Now, after that, what's going to happen is as this plate gets all charged up, um, it's going to basically stop the flow of current to this entire right side of the circuit. And as that happens, now the electrons only have a certain way to go, which would be down the first branch through the first 5 ohm resistor and then back around through here. So it makes this little mini series circuit over here and it has the 5 and a 1 ohm resistor. So it has 12 volts total and 6 ohms total, which gives us 2 amps of current. And that's after some time has passed and our 2 microfarad capacitor gets pretty charged up. Now, the tricky part is after that, um, how we find out the voltage across both of these capacitors. Now, we have to use the loop rule and go ahead and see what's happening there. So if we take a look at our initial loop, um, it's this big one around the perimeter, and it's going to be going through the, both of the capacitors and that 1 ohm resistor. So um, let's first find out the voltage drop for the 5 and 1 ohm resistor, and then we'll get more into the details of what's going on with the capacitors. So if we have 2 amps flowing through the 5 ohm resistor, then 2 times 5 is going to give us a 10 volt drop. And then if we do 2 times 1, that's going to give us a 2 volt drop. So that one follows our loop rule. We leave with um, positive 12, we drop 10, we drop two more, and then the sum of the loop is zero volts. So we want to make sure everything follows that rule no matter what loop we took, take a look at. Now if we take a look at this big green loop, that would tell us that we're going to have a two voltage drop, but then the voltage drop for the two microfarad capacitor along with the voltage for the four microfarad capacitor would have to sum up to a delta V of 10 because if you follow this green loop all the way around we know it's going to drop two at the end so it must drop a total of 10 through the purple and blue capacitors. Now in addition to that let's go ahead and take a look at this branch over here. So something we know about this branch over here is that the current stops and if there's no current over here and we do I times R and this I is zero, then that we, means we know that the delta V for this branch is zero volts. And the way a parallel circuit works is that um, if one branch has a delta V of zero volts, this one also has the same delta V of zero volts. So which narrows things down for us, it tells us that the four microfarad capacitor has a delta V of zero volts, and then that would mean that the purple one is going to have to have the additional 10 to have that total delta V of 10 volts. So then that gives us our final two answers. We have our blue one over here. This was zero. And then the two microfarad one, which is our purple one, that one is going to be 10. And then if you take a look at any of the other loops, um, it will go ahead and follow that rule. 
to make sure that the sum of the voltages around any given loop is going to be zero volts. So I hope that was helpful to you in analyzing a pretty tricky RC circuit and finding some currents and delta Vs across the capacitors. Thanks for watching and listening.